other member who played 30 for 07 families. We are pleased to have Michael Hicks, who is here on behalf of Representative Nick Langworthy, and Teresa Kennedy, who is here on behalf of Representative Brian Higgins. Thank you all for being here today, and I will turn this over to Karen Ecker, who will read some names. Thank you, Chief Herberger, and to all the first responders from February 12th, 2009. It's unbelievable that a commercial flight crashed on one of these local streets just steps away from this fire hall. You are all deeply appreciated. Today, we are honoring the 14th anniversary and we, we remember those who died. Officially, they were tallied as 45 passengers, four crew, and one on the ground. But they had names and they had lives. Each loss devastated family and friends. They came from eight countries of the world and nine states. They valued education. There were five who had Ivy League degrees. Another was in law school two were pursuing MBAs. They made the world a better place. There was a noted 9-11 activist and an internationally renowned human rights activist. There were six veterans from our armed forces with seven combat tours and two Purple Hearts. There were four defense contractors, brilliant engineers and specialists dedicated to protecting our soldiers' lives. They were talented. There were two professional musicians from the Chuck Man Joan Band coming to perform the next day with the Buffalo Philharmonic. They were faith-filled. There was a beloved cantor from a local temple and a church elder. There were two married couples on board, one with their 12-year-old child. One passenger was six and a half months pregnant with her first child. 21 left behind spouses and three were engaged. 20 children under the age of 18 lost a parent. But most of all, they were loved. And we honor and remember their lives. Mary J. Abraham, Clarence A. Butel III, David M. Borner, Linda L. Davidson, Ronald D. Davidson, Ellison DeForge, Beverly Eckert, Chief Master Sergeant John J. Fiore, Ronald Gonzalez, Brad S. Green Sr., Zhao Feng Wo, Ruth V. Hartel, Stephen L. Johnson, Kevin W. Johnston, George Abu Karam, Elise Marie Kausner, Nicole Korzakowski, Jonathan Perry, Jerome D. Krasuski, Brian David Kuklowitz, Beth Ann Kushner, Sean Andrew Lang, Madeline Maddie Loftus, Lauren A. Maurer, Donald McDonald, Coleman T. Mellor, Dawn M. Monachino, Dawn E. Masip, Donald G. Masip, Sean M. Masip, Jennifer E. Neal and her unborn baby boy, Gerard Joseph Nywood, Mary Bell Pettis, Flight Attendant Donna L. Prisco, Flight Attendant Matilda Quintero, Ferris M. Reed, Captain Marvin Dean Renslow, Julie Reese, John G. Roberts III, Kristen Marie Safran, First Officer Rebecca Lynn Shaw, Defender Sidhu, Jean Marie Martzoff Cernes, Darren Talsma, Susan Alice Whaley, Ernie West, Douglas C. Walensky, Shivan Yao, Henry Clay Yarber Jr., and Captain Joseph Zuffaletto. What we as the families of Continental Flight 3407 did in their name was to fight for aviation safety improvements, 
so that no other lives would ever be lost to a completely preventable crash. We join that fight with the National Transportation Safety Board, aviation safety export, experts, the pilots, and members of Congress who were already sounding the alarm. Congress listened and unanimously passed the Airline Safety Act of 2010. As a testament to this, there hasn't been a fatal crash on a U.S. commercial passenger carrier in these last 14 years. That's the safest period in our nation's history by over a decade. But it's both remarkable and sad that we're still having to go and fight in Washington nearly 14 years later. We were in Washington just this week to remind our elected officials that there are consequences to reducing airline safety standards. They can look at us as well as listen to the experts, like Captain Sully Sullenberger from the Miracle on the Hudson, and pilots, including Captain Jason Ambrosi here present, who have testified before Congress. There are no shortcuts to safety. I want to thank Captain Jason Ambrosi and the Airline Pilots Association for coming to Clarence, New York, to remember and honor our loved ones. And I want to thank them for their professionalism and for their staunch support of these higher aviation safety standards, for they know they are in the cockpit every day, flying each one of us safely to our destinations. Thank you. Karen? Hello, um, my name is Karen Walensky, and my daughter Jill and I are witnesses and survivors of the crash of Flight 3407. Even after 14 years, I still find it hard to fathom that Jill and I miraculously escaped that night. And I also cannot comprehend the fact that 51 souls, including my husband Doug, lost their lives at our home, a home that had been filled with love and happiness for our family. I first want to take the opportunity to thank the many firefighters and first responders, and really a community that came together to support us following the crash. And they continue to support us, uh, support us even this day. Karen mentioned the importance of the air safety bill that was passed in 2010. And part of that legislation increased the training of pilots. I often wonder what the pilots' feelings are regarding the increased additional requirements and training that they must now maintain. Now, I love telling stories, as my friends will tell you. And I would like to share a quick one with you of an encounter I had last year when I was flying back from Denver. There were no assigned seats, and I found um, a row where one man was sitting by the window. So I just asked him, barely looked at him, and asked him if I could sit there. And of course, he said, OK. So after we took off, we did begin to converse a little bit. And I was very shocked, to say the least, when I saw that on his lapel, he had a logo, airline logo, on his lapel <coughs> pin. And that logo was the old Continental logo, which is now used by United. Now, after I emerged from the rubble the night in 2009, one of the first things I saw was that Continental logo on the tail of the plane, which was now resting in my kitchen. I did not talk to my airline passenger friend um, you know, about that, but I was thinking about that. And in the meantime, we just chatted a little. I, I found out he was a pilot. And um, I, I didn't, I don't think, at that time, I didn't really tell him too much about myself. 
So we kind of left it at just hellos and things, but that logo is like still on my mind. So um, a little later, after a little encouragement from a few sips of bourbon, I got the courage and I really wanted to know who he flew for in 2009. And I'm trying, I think he said Delta, but I can't recall exactly. I was, I don't know, not that it would have made a difference if it was Continental, but, but anyway. And um, after he told me that, I, you know, relayed the story about my first experience seeing that logo and uh, did tell him a little bit about my story. He was on the way home from Denver after a training session. And I was so impressed and I have to say I, oops, there's my page. I was so impressed and it actually comforted me when he told me that he felt the changes that were made because of the air safety bill had made a big difference in airline uh, travel. I appreciated hearing that. And I also appreciate that um, the Airline Pilots Association organized this event today and have supported us throughout the years. And by doing this event today, they have really honored the loved ones that we have lost. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Karen, I'd like to now welcome up Town of, Town of Clarence Emergency Management, uh, David Bissonnette. Good afternoon. Karen, you continue to amaze me, young lady. Your experience and your stories and your spin to those stories continue to amaze me. So thank you for those, those thoughts. You've heard the names of 50 loved ones lost that night, February 12, 2009. That loss was not only changing the lives of the 3407 families, but it also changed the lives of this community, its first responders, and myself personally. I cannot believe it's been 14 years, and the emotion that still follows me and the rest of this community every day as a result of that experience. That terrible loss, however, has driven some positive change, as you've already heard. Change through determination, unwavering resolve of the 3407 families. Unbelievable to follow through and continue their efforts all these years. Their dedication has resulted in substantial improvements to pilot qualifications and requirements making air travel a safer experience. Going forward, we must all continue to drive and influence policymakers to maintain and improve those qualifications. First responders and emergency management communities continue to support that mission so that today's pilots have the skills, capabilities, and necessary needs for the flying community. I want to thank the Airline Pilots Association and Linda Shotwell for organizing today's event. It warrants this attention every year. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. I'd now like to call on Captain Jason Ambrosi. Good morning. Before I start my prepared remarks, I just wanted to say this is my first trip to Clarence Center and how humbled and honored I am to be with you this morning. And it's a small world. Captain John Newbill, I know him from, uh, from Delta Airlines and had no idea where he lived or, or where he was from happened to recognize him here this morning, and turns out he was here 14 years ago and ran to the, to the site right before they knew what had happened. So thank you, John, for, for joining me. Thank you, Chief Herberger, and thank you to each of you here for joining us 
to honor those we lost 14 years ago in the Flight 3407 tragedy. We feel grateful to be together with the families of Flight 3407. We cannot know your grief, but we can stand in solidarity with you, lift you up, and rededicate ourselves to the cause of safety you have championed in the memory of those you love. As an airline captain, the greatest responsibility I have is to ensure the safety of every passenger on my aircraft. I may not know every individual on my flight, but I do, not, but I do know I care deeply about their safety as well as that of my crew and those on the ground. It's a tremendous privilege to be here, express our gratitude to former Chief David Case, Emergency Manager David Bissonnette, Chaplain Steve Bigner, as well as Chief Herberger and the Clarence Center Volunteer Fire Company, and the other first responders who reacted so quickly in heroic assistance that night. It is also an honor to be here in Clarence Center to express our appreciation to the local government officials for their leadership and compassion. I appreciate having members of the community with us. In the face of pain and loss, the people of Clarence Center in Western New York surrounded neighbors and strangers alike with love and support. I want to thank the National Transportation Safety Board and the Federal Aviation Administration and their investigators, as well as the others who assisted with this investigation for their dedication to ensuring that this nation and the global airline industry learned all it could about how to prevent such an accident from ever happening again. With the tireless determination of the Flight 3407 families, along with the advocacy of many others, including the Airline Pilots Association, this tragedy led the United States to commit to changes that tr have transformed aviation safety. I would like to recognize Michael Hicks, who is here on behalf of Representative Nick Langworthy, who represents Clarence Center and has a long history of commitment to aviation safety. And Teresa Kennedy, who is with us on behalf of Representative Brian Higgins, who has also been a tremendous champion in enhancing safety in air transportation. Together, each person here today and countless others have contributed to ensuring those we lost in Flight 3407 accident leave a legacy of saving lives in the air and on the ground. A legacy of making sure our country sets an example for the world. When Congress passed the Airline Safety and Federal Aviation Administration Extension Act in 2010, lawmakers put in place historic safety improvements, including first officer qualification, experience, and training requirements, the law also advanced science-based fatigue rest rules and required pilot training in areas such as mentoring and leadership, high altitude operations, adverse weather, and stall prevention and recovery. Because of the first officer qualification and training requirements and other improvements, U.S. airline passengers are dramatically safer today. Our communities are safer. Our country is safer. We've established the gold standard in aviation safety and we will never accept anything less. I pledge to you on this solemn day that the Airline Pilots Association will work to make certain the next FAA reauthorization protects and builds on this legacy. We will also do everything we can to ensure that this country does not go backward. Before 2010, we as a nation set the safety bar far too low. I commit to you that Alpha pilots will never allow this to happen again. Rather, we will fight to raise the bar, keep flying safe, and ensure that those who lost their lives in Flight 3407 tragedy continue their legacy of safer skies. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. On behalf of the Clarence Center Volunteer Fire Company, I want to thank you all for the fight you've been fighting. Keep up the good fight. You've been doing a heck of a job in Washington. It does not go unrecognized. For our, final, for our closing remarks, I'd like to call up Chaplain Pastor Steve Bigner. Again, I echo uh, the thanks for all those being here today. May we raise the bar. Absolutely, Captain, thank you. Media, please uh, thank you for being here today. Tell the story. 
tell the story of the families that are still fighting, tell us the stories of those who are trying to reduce these regulations so we know who to talk to. Uh, thank you everyone for being here today. As you go on your way today, may the Lord go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Go today celebrating the lives of those we lost and love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace and be well and be safe. Thanks for being here today.